my name is Alex Isles and welcome to Lord and Shaw's Neolithic rock art up here in Northumberland National Park just next to Rothbury and in today's episode I'm going to be talking about who were the Neolithic people. Now I always like to caveat this that I am not a geneticist. Um, my job, I am a tour guide, I like showing people around the region. It's my job to learn the information, to gather it together and curate it for you. So please look in the description below to some of the links I've provided that will lead you to some real specialists who will be able to say to you, right, this is actually what I've found, give you the exact types of genetics and all of those breakdowns that you are wanting to look at if you're interested exactly in genetic groups and things like that. What I'm going to do is to explain the people and what happened over time. So to start off with, um, obviously humans started farming around uh, the area which we would now know as Mesopotamia, roughly between Iraq and Syria, that sort of area there. As they did, they then expanded and one of those groups moved up into Anatolia or what is today southern Turkey. That group was very, very pro prolific and very, very successful and they started to spread outwards and they spread into southern Europe and as they spread into southern Europe then they went into central Europe, through into France, down into Spain and back up from Spain into Brittany. Now it's this group of people in Brittany that then crosses over into the British Isles around about 4000 BC. When they move into the British Isles they start farming around the British Isles and they start making small villages and settling. They still would have had an element of hunting and gathering in their lifestyle, but they would have also started to make semi-permanent settlements and then find the best land, establish their farms, and then they would grow. And then over the years, they expanded across the British Isles until eventually they covered the whole area. Now, the interesting thing about this group is that when they encountered the Mesolithic Britons, we don't exactly know what happened. What we do know is that Cheddar Man's group, so Cheddar Man is obviously, I've mentioned him before in one of my earlier videos, I describe him as the Mesolithic celebrity because his genetics have enabled us to learn about his specific group of people during the Mesolithic period. And when we've learned about his specific group in the Mesolithic period, um, what we can infer from that is that his particular genetic group did not continue after they encountered the, the Neolithic farmers. So either his group either dies out or that particular group of humans doesn't actually intermingle with the Neolithic farmers or something like that. But we know that his group, their genetics do not pass down into future generations to become a part of the modern British population today. What we see instead is a 99% replacement by the Neolithic farmers of the Mesolithic population. That 1% is probably the fact that as they moved across central and southern, uh, from southern Europe into central Europe, eventually into Spain and France, and then across into the British Isles, some of these Neolithic farmers would have interbred with Mesolithic populations of hunter-gatherers along the way, as hunter-gatherers would have possibly adopted farming or adopted the traditions of the Neolithic farmer groups. And then as they move through, they would have carried some of that Western European hunter-gatherer genetics into the British Isles with them. But the particular group that Cheddar Man belongs to, um, or his genetic group in that area, did not mix with the Neolithic farmers. And uh, see in the description below for some fantastic links to more information about that. But I would also say as well is that we don't know every single Mesolithic group in the British Isles. There are other Mesolithic groups cohabiting in the British Isles at that time. So there is a possibility that those groups intermingled with the Neolithic farmers. And so that accounts for the small amount of Mesolithic DNA in the Neolithic population. But they did expand across the whole country. And as they expanded across the whole country, they settled all over the place building their cairns, building their chamber tombs, and leaving their rock art all over the place. So that's why I've come here to Lord and Shores, because this is the closest I feel that I get to reach out and touch the Neolithic period and see this amazing rock art placed upon this rock, basically giving us an idea of the people's art, maybe some of their beliefs, and how they interacted with the world around them. So I really hope you've enjoyed this video today. You've You've learnt a little bit about this group of Neolithic farmers who started off in southern Turkey, migrated through Europe and then entered
into the British Isles to the point where they then settled in these hills and became the po new population of the British Isles, replacing the earlier Mesolithic hunter-gatherers who had lived in this island before them. If you have enjoyed, please do like and subscribe, share the video with your friends, and alongside that as well, if you would like to support me, I do have a Patreon where you can be involved in steering some of the content of the channel as we go forwards. Until next time though, stay safe and well, and thank you for joining me.